I got my nice mug of tea. I'm gonna drink my mug of tea. Hi everybody, I'm Daniel and welcome to the second Q&A on the channel. And I just wanna say before we begin, thank you to everyone who submitted questions on both Instagram and on YouTube. We're also gonna be looking at me painting this speed paint here of this mountain, and I'll kind of be touching upon it as I go throughout the video. All right, so anyway, let's get straight into it. So Newey31 asks, which do you find easier to draw, landscape or characters? I would have to say because I've practiced landscapes a lot, I definitely find that they're much more easy to draw. And when I was initially studying, I was really drawn to concept art of giant epic scale places. And I always really appreciated how a place could make you feel. So in terms of what I feel comfortable with, it's definitely backgrounds and things like mountains or skies or anything like that. Um, I am trying to get better at characters, but that's a long journey and something I haven't put too much time into. The second question is from Bevan Hewitt's Games Art, who asks, Do you make your own brushes and how long did it take you to learn them? Yeehaw! Um, I do make my own brushes, but it really sort of depends on the type of illustration that I'm working for. So eventually when I make my Bioshock art analysis, which um, is a little bit overdue, I'm sorry for that, but I did make a couple of brushes for things like rivets. So just down in the bottom, um, just a very simple hexagonal pattern. And then I'll just use it based off of the, uh, the illustrations needs if I don't have something specific or that I already have in my arsenal. And as for how long it took me to learn how to make brushes, it's really just watching a lot of different YouTube tutorials and following along and trying to figure out how I can apply that to my own needs. Um, but I still feel like I'm learning constantly whenever there are new updates or anything else. Um, it's always a, a pretty interesting thing to go back and look at. And also one by Sky Zero who asks, what brushes do you use? So I tend to use the same brushes when it comes to painting and it's not necessarily specific brushes, but more the utility of the brush. So what I mean by that is I like to use a couple of different textured brushes and I also like to use an airbrush of some sort, a brick brush and like a few sketching ones, but that's about it. And I find that when it comes to subject matter and things that you're painting, those couple of brushes will take you pretty much the entire way through. Because if you think about something like traditional painting, a traditional painter doesn't have, you know, like a tree brush. They don't have a cloud brush. They have different types of brushes, synthetic, angled, fan brushes, etc. And they kind of use that to represent the subject. So if I'm painting something like foliage, I can use a textured brush to get leaves and everything like that. But that same textured brush can also go on to become concrete or it can also go on to become sort of like the noise you would get in a wave um, in a beach or an ocean. So I kind of approach my brushes in that sort of way, but I tend to just kind of go through different brushes. Um, if I find an artist that I particularly like, I'll download the brushes and just have a look at how they're doing it, use it for a little while, and then just discard them and move on to the next one. Now, the next two questions are to do with texture, so I'm gonna kind of combine them together and answer them both at the same time. And they are by somni.neji and also rams.arts who asks, any tips on adding texture to paintings and how to balance them? When it comes to texture and paintings, it sort of comes later in the painting process. It's not entirely something I think about right at the beginning, um, just because I have sort of a different ways I like to approach it. And texture is not really that important at the start when I'm trying to get things like proportions, for instance, or the initial color blocking stage. So as far as adding texture and any tips, I would say look at the subject, look at what you're trying to paint and try and figure out if there's a way for you to accomplish that with the texture. It sounds very vague, but what I mean is um, I would recommend adding a lot of texture around your focal points. And as things kind of go away in the distance, you can add less texture. And that's just a way to create contrast because when there's a lot of different bits of detail in something, your eye will look directly at it. Um, when it comes to very randomized texture, Nothing is really perfect. A lot of surfaces do have some kind of weathering, some kind of detail. Think about the logic of why something would look the way it does. So for instance, um, on a road, if you've ever noticed on a road, especially near turnings um, and on the curbside, there will always be some kind of dark marks or dents or something like that, just because people are slamming into them in their cars. So you have to think about the logic of why something is textured the way it is, the weather conditions and kind of approach it that way. I hope that answers your question. The next one comes from cgigi.fbx who asks, are there any art mediums you'd like to try out that you haven't? And also, are you excited for any new game releases? 
So as far as art mediums, I have done a lot of stuff digitally, but I haven't done too much traditionally. Um, I haven't even oil painted really, but I have done like very basic acrylic paintings, a little bit of watercolor, and a whole bunch of different sketches as well. Um, I do think gouache looks pretty interesting to use. It looks very... Um, it, it looks very portable, like you can just bring it with you whenever you go do something plein air. And it also looks very interesting to kind of mix different bits together and... I don't know, it just seems like a very, very fun time and very simple as well, so that's probably one I would like to try. As for any game releases, there is one game that I have been pretty excited about that's called Pacific Drive. So it has this really Simon Stolenhog-esque kind of art style to it, and it's I've heard the developers describe it as something like a driving roguelike, which immediately grabs my attention because I, I wonder what the game's about. It has this, like this really weird sci-fi aesthetic, and it's kind of spooky, and you're driving, and like there are all these different you know, creepy things coming at you, and that's like the game for me, so I'm really looking forward to that one. The next question by Reckless is recording, who asks, how are you doing? Uh, well, thank you for asking that. Um, I do appreciate it, and I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. This year has been really nice for me in terms of just art development, personal development as well. Um, I feel very settled in myself as a person right now, and I think that Things are starting to click, which is nice, and um, honestly, I just can't complain. I feel very content with things right at the moment. Guayamax asks, how often do you use modeling slash texturing software to create concept art? Um, good question, Max, and it's nice to see you again in the chat. So this one really depends on the illustration itself, because if I'm doing something very, very complex and very detailed, I will probably nine times out of ten go into Blender and get the initial composition down after I've sketched, I mean. Um, recreate that in Blender, just because I don't really want to fuss with a lot of perspective grids. So by dropping straight into Blender, I get to essentially cut all of that out. I will do a little bit of texturing sometimes if I'm lazy or if I'm doing a very specific lighting setup and I want to see how local colors change. That's sort of where I do it. But when I think about adding 3D, I think about it more as like a push-pull kind of thing, right? So like the more 3D you do, the less painting you end up doing because you like compositing and vice versa the less 3d you do the more painting and drawing you'll have to do to kind of get it to you know like a finished acceptable standard so it depends um is to answer my to question but usually for a lot of like small studies and stuff like that i won't even bother it's usually for bigger illustrations that i'll do some kind of 3d um, if i need to the next question from aaron lynch asks will we get more wyatt art and the answer is uh hell yeah I just am terrible drawing my OCs, but Wyatt is, you know, a character that I really want to develop further and I've got a whole backstory for him and why he is the way he is and sort of the little adventures that he's gone up to. But I definitely do have a series in mind just showing Wyatt interacting with a bunch of different scrapyard robots and maybe trying to do something with that, but the answer is yes, for sure, of course. The next one by OKE asks, favorite landscapes to draw? For me, I would have to say mountains. There's something really awesome about mountains to paint. Um, there's a lot of texture involved. Sometimes there's a lot of trees, sometimes there's snow, sometimes there's different interesting lighting conditions. Like the one that I'm drawing right now, for instance, I really wanted to play up that aqua kind of color. And because I noticed that um, in the reference image, there was a lot of really cool blue lighting coming in from the atmosphere. That's something I really wanted to emphasize as well. It's that distinction between light and dark. And specifically with colors as well, having that cool really, really show through. So it has this like feeling when you look at it, it's warm in the warm parts. And then if you imagine if you're in the shadow, you'd be like freezing. So I definitely find because mountains are rigid and they're sort of there, <laughs> you know, um, I find it a lot easier to paint something with clouds, for instance. I know a lot of people like painting clouds who also paint a lot of environments and landscapes. Not really me, I mean it's something that I'm trying to get better at, but because clouds are so soft, it has like a, the opposite effect where I really have to think more about subsurface scattering, things like lighting conditions and things just a lot more. And also having something above the horizon that's overlapping itself, that's casting shadows on itself, I just find difficult to paint for whatever reason. Um, and I really do think it's, yeah, just because clouds are soft, I mean like, yeah, I prefer hard, rigid mountains, which is <laughs> a sentence that, um, yeah, pause. Now the next question by High Spec Robo asks, any advice on dealing with mental health struggles and doubts? So this is a pretty big question, 
and I'm not a therapist or anything like that. I just have to mention that, you know. Um, but I think as far as dealing with mental health struggles, for me personally, I am quite anxious. And so sometimes I tend to really overthink the future and feel a lot of anxiety towards that. Um, I've also had a couple of run-ins with burnout before and trying to recover from that, which is never fun. I definitely think what works for me is, you know, things like friends and family, of course, having a really good support network and also just kind of reflecting and sitting in it and thinking about why I'm feeling the way I'm feeling, doing a lot of internal research and writing about stuff really, really helps me out. And also just knowing that things will be okay eventually. They may not be right now, but I also do a bit of meditation when I sit down. Uh, I, I would recommend the Wim Hof one just because it helps to calm me down and it doesn't fix your problems. Like meditation doesn't make things go away or whatever, but it does get you to a place where you can kind of think about it a little bit clearer. That's sort of the best way I can describe meditation for people that don't do it. And um, I definitely would say give it a try as well if you're sort of on the fence about it. I know meditation can seem a little bit wishy-washy, but there is science to back it up. There are different bits and pieces about how it engages the parasympathetic nervous system. And again, but that's just for anxiety, right? Like I'm not entirely sure what other mental health struggles uh, perhaps you may be going through. I don't want to make any assumptions either, but I just definitely think that having a good support network and talking to people and opening up is probably the first and most important step um, with that. But thank you for your question. Now, the next question by Levaini, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, asks, do you ever start sketching a new artwork, being all inspired and productive, but then struggle when it comes to painting and finalizing it? Uh, yes and no. I feel like when I was learning how to paint a lot, I would have really grand ideas, really big ideas. And then when I would start and then, yeah, kind of go through the process realize like, ooh, maybe this is like not where my skill level is at. <laughs> I kind of bitten off a little bit more than I can chew and I try to finish them, but sometimes I just call it and I'm like, nah, that's, that's not it. But some other times as well, um, things are much, much easier. So I will say I'm not entirely sure how to persevere through that because sometimes you're spending a lot of hours on one illustration and you can kind of tell it's not really going anywhere. And there's a there's a thing with the flow state. I can't remember who said it or where I read it from, but basically it kind of goes along the lines of if you find something super easy and the challenge is really, really low and your skill level is high, you're going to find it boring. If the challenge is a little bit above your skill level, uh, then you're going to find it kind of fulfilling and you get in the flow state. Or if the challenge is beyond your skill level, you're going to end up being frustrated. So I think that's kind of what happens when we sort of struggle to finish artworks is because we're actually trying to do something a little bit out of our skill level. Um, and the way to do that is just like a whole bunch of studies basically on whatever it is you're trying to accomplish. Um, but yeah. Mystical asks, do you have a step-by-step -step process pertaining to your art? Sort of like a checklist. Example, one line art, two flat colors, etc. cetera. Uh, yes, absolutely. And in the study here, actually, you can kind of see me go through this process. Um, this is the exact same process I apply for all of my studies, specifically with landscapes, because with portraits and stuff, it's a little bit different. But with landscapes, I will always start with the sky first, always. And that is because the sky determines a lot of the colors and a lot of the lighting that you're going to be using later on in the process. And it also covers the entire thing. So I'll start with the sky, use some kind of gradient. And then the second stage is to focus on the sketch. So I'm kind of using like some sort of sketchy brush or whatever. And I'm specifically thinking about shape, language, and design here. So I'm looking at my reference and I'm sketching things out and I'm thinking, okay, can I push the edge of this mountain here? Can I make things flow a little bit better? What are some things I can do with clouds? Can I make them kind of swoop in a little bit? Can I simplify things? And as I sketch it out, I'll sort of flip the canvas a little bit back and forth to see how everything is looking together and kind of just go from there. And then once that's done, I will block in all of the uh, local colors and the shadows sort of at the same time. Um, and then once all that's finished, then I'll start detailing and sort of like finish it up from that, from that way. But the answer is yes, I do have a step-by-step -step process in the future. I do want to make a video talking about this a little bit more in detail so that other people can follow along. But yeah, one third art asks, are you a full-time artist? If not, what do you do for a living? 
So I have been working sort of freelance and doing conventions and, you know, a little bit of YouTube as well. Um, but I'm not a, a full-time artist. I do have a day job and in, in that I am an optical dispenser. So that's just like a fancy Australian term for I sell glasses um, and people have different prescriptions and stuff. I have to order lenses for them. I have to help find the different frames that fit people and then kind of just help them uh, with that. But that's sort of uh, what I do during the day and then all the art stuff later on. Um, I would like to do all of the art stuff full time. It's just setting a lot of things up really is um, is where I what I'm doing right now to kind of get to where I need to go. Sphinx underscore asks, what is your favorite movie, animated or not? Boy, okay, so <laughs> this, this question is interesting because I always have a different favorite movie at any given time. With video games, I can 100% confidently say Red Dead Redemption 2, that's just my favorite game hands down. But when it comes to movies, I'm gonna kind of list a couple sort of like within recent memory that I've really enjoyed. Um, Dune is, was freaking amazing. I, I thought that was such a captivating film. I hadn't actually read the book or anything like that, but I thought the world building was really interesting. I also really like a lot of Tarantino films. Um, I guess, what, what else is there? The Dark Knight, that's up there. That was a really good one. Alien, Predator, really like those movies. I'm, I'm not sure if they're my favorite, but they were very like influential on in me. Of course, Into the Spider-Verse, I have to mention that one as well. And um, I'm also thinking of like 500 Days of Summer right now. I watched that recently. I rewatched it recently, sorry. And um, I just thought the writing was just impeccable and it. it was just really, really good and very realistic characters as well. But those are, I don't know if that answers the question, but those are the movies I can think of at this moment. Tintin.0 asks, when did you really start improving in your art and how? So back when I started painting and taking it seriously, which was in the start of 2016, um, I felt in 2020, that was when I noticed a giant sort of leap up in my skills um, as an artist. And I think it's because by that point, I'd practiced my fundamentals enough where I could start to experiment and really think about the art that I wanted to create. So I wasn't, I mean, I was still struggling with things like lighting and, and composition and stuff at the time. And I'm always going to be trying to one up myself basically. But during 2020, I did the series called Within Our Thoughts, which I do have a video that you can check out right here. And I think because I was doing a lot of soul searching and trying to figure out what I was about, what kind of art I wanted to create, what sort of things influenced me art wise that wasn't fan art. Um, that's when I saw like a giant step up in, in just my skills. And I think because I had a project to drive myself forward in a series and I had like different bits and pieces of things to um, to consider in, in the series, constraints I mean, which is stuff like it needs to be lo-fi, it needs to be relaxing, it needs to be all of these different things. I think I was painting a lot <laughs> and because my style had changed a lot and it felt much more like me, I felt a lot more motivated to create things. And so that's when I noticed a, a giant step up in, in myself personally. The next question by Yui Hanima. Again, sorry if I'm mispronouncing it, um, but they ask, what did you study in university? I did a double major of games art and design and sound when I studied at university. So one half of my degree was all about things like modeling, animation, concept art, illustration, all that kind of stuff. And then the other half was all about recording musical instruments and doing a little bit of radio, doing a little bit of sound design as well. And so I think that um, both of those skills kind of marry together very well in terms of doing something like YouTube, for instance, because I feel quite comfortable with the process. Um, and I'm also very, very grateful to kind of have those experiences as well, but that's what I studied. Lusterdog9694 asks, is the AI art panic slash revolution over? When everyone was talking about it last year, artists were freaking out and AI bros were claiming AI art is the future, adopt or become obsolete. Now that the dust has settled, it seems artists aren't worried anymore and the people who adopted AI did so while most of the public moved on. Are you seeing anything AI related in the circles you hang out in? It's also a question for viewers. I think ultimately people like the act of drawing and painting and a lot of art consumers still like human made art. Big question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the question. Um, as far as like, is the AI art panic over? That's not really up for me to decide. It's more of a cultural thing. We kind of feel like the dust is settled or at least like the initial shock is settled and it's becoming a little bit more um, in our minds a little bit more settled perhaps than, than, you know, then, then that's what it is. But as far as how I feel about AI art, 
I, I'm sort of of two minds on it right now. I do think AI as a tool, like just as a very objective point of view, what AI can do, like you type in words and something and it gives you an image. That's pretty freaking incredible. But I also obviously think on the other half of it as an artist as well, there are there definitely needs to be ethical uh, elements placed, like laws and everything like that to make sure people aren't getting ripped off or having their intellectual property stolen. Now, it's very, very hard to do that with visual art because for the music industry, it's just been around for a lot longer. And especially with the AI stuff, right now it's still in its infancy so we're all kind of still figuring out how this is going to go um granted culturally we're not as shocked about it any anymore perhaps but in terms of the long lasting impact of ai that still really remains to be seen um in sort of my circles i don't really see or hear a lot too much about ai art just sort of in perth most of the people i hang out with we all kind of have a a giant um stand against ai for obvious reasons uh, as artists, but it's nothing too crazy. Like, I don't really hear a lot of tech bros and stuff in Perth talking about it, or at least if they do, I'm not aware of it. Now, I think the point specifically for people liking the act of drawing and painting, AI can only do so much because the way that AI works, or at least my understanding of it, is that it's already creating images based off of images that already exist, right? And it can't necessarily create something entirely from scratch. So you type in a prompt, and I know that it kind of spits something out, but as far as those kind of weird, I don't know how to describe it, the, that, that soul feeling that you get from art, the kind of when people put down their inspiration, their act into it, they're creating something from their life experiences. And again, I don't want to get too philosophical in this or anything like that, but I think as far as business sense goes, if people understand that this art is not created with AI, it makes it much more impressive because obviously somebody had to train and sit down and do it and we have a lot more of a relatability sense of okay what it goes into becoming and training as an artist versus like a machine that spits something out but yeah that's kind of my general thoughts around uh, that giant topic <laughs> so thank you anyway that's going to bring us to the end of the q a and if i didn't answer your question don't worry i have written it down and i will include it in the next one in the future also just an update on the 10k giveaway congratulations again to heaven snugs for winning the inspiro inc h320m and i really hope you enjoy your new tablet i also do really appreciate everybody sharing their articles with me in the review just because i felt like reading it i felt like i connected a lot more to to you guys and, and just sort of understanding sort of what motivates you what drives you what kind of things you'd like for yourself in your own art careers and everything like that um so thank you i do appreciate it anyway that's going to bring us to the end of this video thank you so much for tuning in and until next time everyone take care and stay safe